Hi there. In this episode, we're gonna talk about family rooms and entryways. In many homes, the entry is the first thing people see, and then the family room is the most used space in the house. Today we're going to tour the family room, which functions as a TV room, and the entry in this Playa Vista project. In this house, you enter on the first floor, but the main living spaces are on the second floor. You'll learn how I made sure this frequently unused space in this house became one of the favorite rooms in their home. This entry is the first impression of the home. In this video, I'll show you how we made sure to get that first impression right. I've included a download of the color and material palette we used in this family room and entry for free on the link below. Just put in your email and download the file. This project was a complete gut renovation. We started with a really generic house, three stories, very much a builder special, pretty much nothing to write home about here, and changed the complete first floor layout, gutted everything, took off the funky texture on the walls, all the bull nose corners, all the tiny short little doors, made those nice and tall, all new doors and windows throughout the exterior as well, new tile, new finishes, moved bathrooms, gutted the kitchen, and ended up with a really beautiful house. So I'm excited to walk you through it and show you what we did. So for this complete renovation, we really wanted to make this first floor of the house much more usable. This is a three-story home. The living room, the kitchen, the main bedrooms are on the second and third floor. So this lower level was really just kind of the front door, um, some hallway space, and then a kind of a theater room, but it really wasn't inviting. It was very dark, there wasn't a lot of natural light, and this is the only floor where you have access to the beautiful garden. So we really wanted to make this more of a multi-use space, a lot more welcoming, having that indoor-outdoor lifestyle. One of the first things I did was relocate the front door. It just kind of didn't feel like the front door when you walked up to the house before. It looked like just a window. So for this entry, I wanted to have a really beautiful, welcoming entrance to the house that also started to set the tone for what you're going to see as you travel through the space and let the design unfold. The custom pivot front door was a big moment and a big change from what used to be here. This was a wall and the front door was around the corner. So once we made that move, it made a lot more sense. The approach to the house and the arrival made total sense because the front door was in front of you. Before it used to feel like kind of a side, a side door, like you were going into like just the random slider into the lower level. And I know I was confused the first time I walked up to the house. So if you're feeling like you don't have a proper front door, sometimes the style or the design or the approach just needs to be changed so that you have a really good experience from the moment you set foot in the house. We took out a large entry wall so that when you came into the space, instead of seeing a huge hallway, you now had a really functional bar area and more of a welcoming entry to have guests and have parties down here. We canceled one of the bathrooms, relocated the laundry, moved another bathroom and some, opened up some walls so that we reclaimed a lot of what was once just a big hallway and made it really functional, usable living space. We created this wonderful wine room and made sure to leave a glass window on one side and a glass door on the other so that you could enjoy the space from the family room and also from the bar area. We added large sliders into this room here so that you could open those out and go indoors and outdoors, especially as they have young kids, so they get to have parties and enjoy the time with their family inside and out. When you're designing a media room, I love to make sure that the sofa is not just facing a wall. So the TV used to be on this back wall. We moved it to the side wall so that when you're sitting in the sofa, you can still interact with people in the rest of the space and not solely be focused on the television with your back to the rest of the room. With making this such a beautiful family room with the TV, we took the TV out of the living room. They didn't really watch it up there very much anyway. Now that space feels more beautiful and finished for more elegant entertaining. And down here, it draws you into the space to watch the game or cartoons on a Saturday morning. When you're redesigning a space, make sure you leave room for art. I often see in these open floor plans these days that they pretty much try to strip out all the walls, which 
doesn't leave you room for beautiful decorations, for mirrors, for finishes, or for artwork, and for great decorative lighting. So when you're looking at your floor plan and making all those changes, make sure that you think about how you're gonna light the space, where those focal points are going to be, where you're gonna have furniture and where you want art above it before you commit to placement of your walls. To create more usable space in the center of this floor, we had to move the bathroom, which was originally where the wine room was. It didn't have a window, which I hate. I always like to have natural light and fresh air in a bathroom. So we shrunk the laundry room, which was huge and had a window, um, put the laundry in a small closet, because frankly, you don't always need a giant laundry room. Made a beautiful guest bathroom there instead. and where the bathroom was created this beautiful bar and wine room. There was a closet under the stairs, so we ripped that out and pushed that back to gain more usable square footage versus just more storage down here. Just those simple floor plan changes often make a space just feel better, and when people are there entertaining together, it's not so isolating. When it comes to finishes, I always like to do something a little special as soon as you walk in the house. Um, we moved the front door to face the gate so that when you walk up to the house, the approach feels a lot better. This floor panel um, custom pivot steel door was something we had made specially for the space. I love that horizontal look, looks really nice. We used my Baldwin Hardware Hollywood Hills collection in oil rub bronze as the door hardware there. And as you pivot this beautiful glass and steel door, we did board form concrete as the focal point on that wall with some really beautiful steel and hand blown glass sconces. I continued the board form concrete over here in the family room so that as you come into the space, you have that consistency. And it's a really special, interesting material uh, versus just more drywall. This is a console from my furniture collection and we ordered these gorgeous little sconces from Australia. I love the dark steel and the little um, hand-blown glass globe. Really kind of sets a cool tone and those round shapes continue as you move through the space. We did the wood ceiling down here as well, which we continued onto the exterior so that you really have this seamless interaction between the interior of the space and the exterior. We chose a tile for the floor that could go indoors and outdoors as well, so that as you open up those beautiful sliders, you've got the same finished material, and as you sit here and you see the ceiling, the ceiling material continues to the outside as well, which makes the space feel bigger. If you'd used a different material like it was before or had a different finish on this ceiling and a different finish on that ceiling, it just continues to chop up the space. So as you're planning your material choices, you wanna make sure that you use materials in an indoor-outdoor space like this that truly can be seamless. So going up the stairs and in the rest of the house, we have hardwood, but on the first floor we have tile so that we could achieve that indoor-outdoor flow. One thing that you really wanna make sure you do well, I think, in any home is the doors and the hardware. It's the one thing that everyone in your house is going to interact with. So when you have hollow doors and you can flail them open like they're not even there, they just don't feel substantial. So invest in a good quality door, invest in a taller door. We raised the height on all of the doors here. They were very low before and they were hollow and they just looked like plastic. And they felt cheap because they were cheap. So we bought beautiful big doors, made sure to put nice hardware on it, and that height and that change alone makes the house feel like totally extraordinary. I love a really beautiful bar in a home. I think it creates a nice ambiance. Even if you are um, not a big drinker, it's always cool for parties. You can set food out there. It always creates a nice vibe, and I really like mirror backing in a bar and glass shelves to add a little sparkle. It looks really pretty with tea lights in the evening. Um, reflecting on there. So bars to me should be really kind of a fun, playful space, something that you enjoy showing off. Beautiful bottles, beautiful glassware, silver, bronze elements, things that sparkle and shine. Uh, they always tend to draw people in. So for this bar, we did a beautiful stone island and continued that stone on the back and wrapped it up and around, kind of almost looking like it's inset into the wood paneling. And you'll see the wood that continues from the staircase wraps this whole corner and goes all the way back to the end. You always want your wood paneling or your finished materials like that to die in a corner that you don't see. So not on a corner facing at you, but a corner in like that. So you don't see the difference between the materials and it feels much more seamless. It feels like an architectural move of, of substance versus knowing like, oh look, they slapped some wood paneling on that wall. 
You never want people to be able to see where your finished materials end whenever you can possibly avoid it. Or if you do have that case, you wanna make sure that one overlaps the other nicely so that you don't have an ugly edge or an ugly seam being exposed. When you choose a sink for your bar area, uh, it doesn't have to be silver. And please avoid stainless steel. It's, it's not a very beautiful kind of elegant finish. It's very much a workhorse finish. So if you're choosing a beautiful bar sink, make sure it's beautiful. Here we did a really beautiful hammered copper with a dark, beautiful arched faucet, something that feels a little bit more special. So even if you want it to be contemporary and clean and cool, it doesn't have to be stainless steel. For a bar sink, I really prefer something round and the smaller the better. Uh, those square sinks, although they look cool, they trap stuff in the corners and they're kind of a pain in the butt. So I often opt for a round sink and in a bathroom space or a bar space um, that maybe isn't getting used a lot, because honestly people kind of hardly ever use their bar sinks, you can go with something that is a little bit more fancy and really there just to add decorative interest versus something that you need to make sure holds up to heavy, heavy daily use. One move that I love to make with furnishings is contrasting round with square. So everything in the structure of this home is very linear. We have big square windows, hard lines, square bars, square doors, square windows for the most part, square rectangular tiles. And so all of the furniture you'll notice is very curvy. I like those soft edges. It encourages more of a flow to the space and it contrasts the look really nicely. If you have rectangular floor tile, rectangular windows, a big rectangular ceiling, a rectangular bar, rectangular television, and then everything else is a big square rectangle, it just doesn't feel good. So think about softening your design with round shapes. You'll see the pendant light we did here, very curvaceous, the oval dining table, the chairs are rounded, the sofa has a beautiful curve to it, the cocktail table is oval, the stools are oval, the vases are all oval, so that you get that softening of shape to contrast all of the hard, crisp lines. For the color palette, we continued our very neutral palette with strong contrast in the creams and light stone colors with the black edges, and then brought in a little bit of a soft muted green down here. Picks up in the rug, the linen upholstery on the chairs, and then soft accents in the pillows so that you feel that indoor-outdoor natural color palette coming through. As you look outside, you see all this beautiful green. And so I like bringing that into the space like this so that you feel it's very seamless. It's not like outside is green and brown and in here is like red and yellow. So if you're doing that indoor outdoor vibe where the landscape here really is part of this interior, it's nice to take those color cues from nature and bring them inside so that as you look around any angle in this house, down on this first floor, it really pulls together for you. The stone we even chose on the bar has a little bit of a greenish tone to it. So pulling together your color palette is the number one way to make your space look really cohesive. Think about that and be really rigid with your color palette when it comes to the accessories you choose, when it comes to the art you choose, the rug you choose. Those things are gonna make your space either look incredibly polished and pulled together or eh, like maybe you could have done a little bit more work and thought into it. So color palette is the number one driver to make any space feel really cohesive. You can mix styles, you can mix furniture eras, you can mix architectural moments, you can mix textures and all kinds of things for interest, but the color palette really needs to flow together. To create a little highlight of warmth and interest in our bar area, we chose these beautiful black cone pendants that are finished in gold on the inside so that they give you that nice, beautiful glow. And then on the front of the bar, we did a brushed brass panel so that it ties that gold together and adds a little bit of extra sparkle. We already had a ton of wood paneling wrapping all the way from the garage behind the staircase around the wine room. So we didn't wanna continue that wood again. So I thought the brass added that nice little bit of warmth and tied together the interior finish on the lighting. One of my signature moves is to always hang the drapery as high as possible. It always looks better. So you'll notice here I hung the rod right at the ceiling line and did beautiful washed linen unlined panels. They give you that kind of cool casual elegance and it's something that's really easy to live with. They're easily cleanable and it also gives you a nice indoor outdoor feel because here we've got big glass doors and everybody walks up to your house this way. So if you had drapery with an ugly white lining, 
everyone's gonna see it. So if you have windows that you actually spend time on the other side, and when their drapery are closed, you need to also think about that lining because nothing looks worse than seeing like the blackout white plastic or you know some funky shocking white color when it doesn't go with the rest of your house. So you'll either want to choose self lining, which means you're using the same fabric on both sides of the drapery, or something like this that looks beautiful unlined. We weren't going for blackout down here, so it wasn't necessary to line the drapery. And I really like the look of this unlined kind of casual linen vibe. And then no matter which side they're on, you know, you can't, it doesn't turn over and you are exposing this kind of underbelly of the drapery. So that's something that you want to avoid if you're choosing to make custom drapery or you're buying some off the shelf. Outdoor lighting is a really important element of any outdoor space, especially if you want to encourage the usage of the area. You wanna make sure that you've got beautiful sconces that are gonna wash um, up and down on the house to create some dramatic interest. When we chose these sconces, we chose them for that exact reason. They're very architectural looking, and when they're on, they shine light up and down, which creates a really beautiful element in the evening. We also did lighting throughout the garden and the landscape to light up all of the trees so that at night you don't feel closed in in this room. You can see out to the beautiful landscape and did some pots and accents along to kind of keep some space open for the kids to play and kick the ball, but um, also softening that big stone wall out there. These columns were here originally. We wanted to change them out, but it just got to be too costly. So that was one of the choices that drove this light colored floor is because it's pretty much the same color as the columns. And when you color match things like that, they tend to just disappear. Had I done a darker floor, you would have really seen those white bases of those columns and it would have made the columns stand out even more. But because the flooring is all the same color, your eye almost doesn't even see the columns and that's what we really wanted. We wanted to disguise it. So if you're looking to disguise an element, you want to have it blend into its surroundings. And so that's what really drove the decision to have a light floor. A, it's a great look, but when you know you're trying to hide something else and you think about where that material is gonna touch, as you're choosing those materials for your project, you wanna think about where it's gonna end in every single space and is it working for you or working against you. Had those columns been dark, I probably would have chosen a much darker tile so that they would have disappeared. I really like to have accessories that bring in that more handmade natural feel. So you see in this house, we've got natural woven baskets kind of casually thrown around, which gives you a little bit more of a relaxed feel because the architecture that we brought into the space is very serious and very severe. We have this incredible black steel staircase right when you walk in. You know, it's a very hard, uh, hard lined, serious front door, the board form concrete. So layering in some more casual elements, the vintage chairs that you see here, the rustic basket, really kind of brings the uh, severity down a notch and makes it feel more casual and approachable. Anytime you can contrast hard and soft, square and round, black and steel with natural handmade woven elements, I find it really visually pleasing. You'll see here we did the custom colored switches. Um, these are all Lutron, and what I really like is you don't see the screws. So the covers snap on, and it's a really clean, beautiful look. We use them in multiple colors around the house, depending on the finish that they're going on. And just that little touch alone makes each vignette really feel so much more complete. We brought that concrete look on the risers of the stairs as well, going up to the living room. This proved to be a really difficult thing to get right, but after much trial and error, we got the concrete the right color, we got the right texture. It's a really cool look, and so you see that concrete alternating with the wood stair treads and that beautiful black and steel railing as you go up to the second floor. Anytime you're putting beautiful finishes on your walls, such as wood or concrete or wallpaper or anything, you wanna make sure that the outlets and the switches coordinate. So you'll notice down here, we used a taupe light switch on our beautiful wall paneling. Uh, we faux finished the vent above the wine room door to disappear into the wood. Those little moves are what really make a house feel more finished versus walking through and seeing all these bright light white fixtures because your eye is gonna go to the moment of sharpest contrast. So think ahead and anywhere that you're gonna be using beautiful wall finishes, choose your colored outlets and switches in advance and have them special ordered so that you can have them installed uh, at the get-go and not have to go back and change things out. When it comes to can lights or air conditioning vents or uh, fire sprinklers, Faux finish them so that they match the surface they're on and it's gonna make your room look so much more complete. 
If you enjoyed, please like the video below and subscribe to my channel. And don't forget to click the bell to be notified when a new episode comes out, as well as leave a comment or question. Check out some of my other episodes and tutorials here to learn about how to design and build a wonderful home. If you'd like to check out my complete kitchen design and bathroom design and interior renovation courses, visit my website. You can also follow me on Instagram at Erin V Style.